I think it's weird. It feels like I'm like separated from you. I don't know why. So uh, thank you for having me today. Uh, this is my first time in Dayton. Yeah! I don't know if you've been to the Crown Plaza. They have an amazing view from the restaurant that's uh, like the lounge area that's up there. You get a really good view of like all of Dayton. It's really, really pretty. It reminds me a lot of Milwaukee. That's where I'm from. Uh, there's lots of brickwork and lots of like older structures that are all sort of full of character, I guess you would call it. You, know, like it's, uh, you can kind of tell like where buildings were built and renovated throughout the decades and stages of the city. I thought it was really sort of an interesting place to have it here, right? It's just really awesome to be able to stay across the street, but also uh, having never been here to sort of get the bird's eye view of the culture of Dayton, right? I thought it was really awesome. So uh, for me, and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of my background so you understand why it matters that I'm talking to you, and hopefully you'll care a little bit more about what I have to say. Uh, so my name's John. If you want to be friends on the internet, you can follow me at JJJ. Uh, that would be awesome. I like people and talking. But mostly, uh, I've spent probably the past seven years uh, contributing to WordPress. I uh, started off myself in the support forums, uh, just trying to generally kind of understand how people were using WordPress and trying to be helpful. So I started software development, like my parents' basement when I was 14 years old, Visual Basic and just hacking that stuff. Before there was an internet, I was reading books and copying code and typing it all out because I, there was no easy resource for any of those things. So for me, sort of the problem solving of being an engineer happened pretty early. Uh, whereas I think that uh, for a lot of people here that are discovering WordPress or are learning how to develop and write code through PHP, you have a lot more resources, but there's just like a lot happening in every direction. The analogy that I hate to use, but I think makes the most sense, is you're kind of jumping into a moving car every time you try and figure out where you fit. And so when I started contributing to WordPress, uh, I think it was a lot easier. So here's my, here's my contributing slides. Are there any typeface people that really like fonts in here? No? Does anyone know what this is? This is like a fun tangent. So do you? Tell me. Give me back. No, what is no, what is the font? Do you know what the typeface is? Oh, like, sorry. You know what the, no, okay. No, it's okay. Comment very good. Engineer saying so this is the this is San Francisco. This is the Apple Watch typeface. Because I can't wait for that to come out, and I'm just living vicariously through San Francisco, right? Uh, but I, I've spent the majority of my WordPress career uh, just contributing, right? Just volunteering time. And uh, so my history, my personal history of how this happened, uh, would be probably difficult to start today. Uh, because WordPress was a different piece of software with kind of a different community back then. It was, uh, it was, I was kind of learning a little bit about maybe how I could contribute and help, and if I was a developer or an architect or what it was that I was really the most passionate about. Uh, but ultimately, what it took pretty much my whole career to come to this exact same point is it really is just about the community itself. And that's what I think why you're all here is because there is such an enormous amount of resource and people and activity around WordPress as a piece of software. There are alternatives like Joomla or Drupal or yeah. PHP New. Does anybody remember PHP New? Yeah. You know, right? Like lots of lots of that stuff, right? Where uh, it, the contributing then I think meant something different now. The philosophy behind it uh, has kind of maybe stayed the same, but a WordPress is a project. Uh, thanks to someone, I think, like a visionary like Matt or any of the early contributors, uh, they, they really did a good job of defining the vision of WordPress pretty early on as democratizing publishing and being open and being free and being giving and uh, having it be open source. And, uh, and, and like what is now sort of in the WordPress credits page, if you start digging a little bit deeper, some of the other projects that WordPress has sort of absorbed or uses that maybe you would have never thought of WordPress as sort of a culmination of other pieces of software, right? Like WordPress started off as 
B2 Cafe blog. It was a separate piece of software that Matt turned into WordPress. Not really any different than any of you who could say, you know what, I don't like BuddyPress. I'm going to fork it and make something new and great. And you could very easily do that, right? Like, you can, you can be the next Matt Mullen if you really want to. That's the beauty of uh, open source software and GPL and licensing and all that. So when you consider, like, the real history of WordPress, it's really not that far off from anything else that you could do at this point. But I started off in the forums because that was the lowest barrier of entry. There were people asking questions, and I could answer them. Very simple, right? Like, I, you know, probably think I can help you narrow down how to solve that problem. And uh, since I sort of understood PHP, I had taught myself that through PHPBB. Is anybody bulletin board software, right? Which is where, uh, when I found WordPress, I was really surprised that there was no profile, there was no activity, there was none of it. It was just a blog. I was like, what's the big deal about WordPress? It's just, it's just posts. That's not, they're like, how do you even know who writes the post? You click on somebody's name, and it takes you to more posts. That's not what I'm looking for. I want to see who this person is. And that's where uh, something like BuddyPress and BBPress were sort of invented to solve that problem of flipping a WordPress installation a little bit on its side to say, well, the content is important, but What's the community behind that content? And, uh, and eventually, in 2010, I went to work at Automatic, and I went there with an agenda. I was already working on open source, and was already had clients and relatively successful business going, working on BuddyPress, consulting and contracting, and uh, went to Automatic, really, to try and work more on WordPress.org, on WordCamp.org. So what you use to buy your ticket and see the attendees page and use your WordPress.org login, uh, that was all an idea back in 2007. That didn't really work that way. And so architecting that experience and merging a bunch of code together, and, so that was what I originally did at Automatic, but a lot of people go to Automatic uh, as the upper echelon of WordPress, right? Like you think WordPress, you think Automatic. You think, okay, well I eventually do want to get a job at this top tier WordPress place, right? Uh, but Automatic as a company, uh, doesn't always just work on WordPress and Jetpack and Gravatar and all these other things that they do and the VIP side of it. And the thing I wanted to work on was the community. Like, I care about you guys. I want to help you guys have a better experience, a better time, better software, uh, have WordCamp work better, have BuddyPress be a better piece of software, BBPress, eventually internationalization through QuadPress and translating all this stuff into all their languages. Um, and so I didn't really get to do that at all. Right? Like, that's what I care about. Uh, and Automatic obviously cares about those things too, but to, to employ someone full time to only do that is kind of a big step. And eventually, I, my own personal journey, right, through like my career was to work a little bit on Jetpack and REST API, Jetpack Comments, uh, and then moved to their VIP site, where I did code review and deployments uh, for you know their VIP clients. And all this time has been a site admin and working on WordPress.org. Uh, making sure that you know stuff that's there is working correctly, doing code review there, working on the community profile side of it. So that's where I come from, right? So I started off in the forums, just being helpful, finding ways that I thought WordPress wasn't really that great, and then just doing whatever it was that I could to almost kind of frantically solve those problems pretty early on because they were so uh, so obvious to me as just places where there were little gaps that could have been filled in. Uh, but that starts off right with volunteering. The, the, whole, the whole reason why I'm here uh, is because I enjoy the volunteering side of it. I don't know if you like the personal branding and marketing side of what volunteering is, but uh, when I was a kid, because uh, I enjoy telling stories about myself, who doesn't? I guess. So when I was a kid, uh, you know, I was I was a boy, so I got into trouble. I did things that you weren't supposed to do, and eventually uh, did community service because I had to. But, <laughs> but, besides the point, it was essentially volunteering. It was work that I didn't want to do, but once I was done with that stint of community service I had to do, I stayed because it was rewarding. There was a community of people at the camp that I was helping out with. I mean, I was scrubbing floors, cleaning the bathrooms, mowing the lawn, whatever, but it was, it was the culture of that atmosphere uh, that kind of uh, kept me there, right? 
And, uh, and it was, I, I was fortunate enough to have had this experience early enough on in my life where I found the value of volunteering as a way to sort of do all of the things that you don't always consider, like networking or having a structure, a regimen, a nine to five. Uh, you know, I was 13 years old, I would have rather been at the beach messing around, but I, I learned early on that volunteering was rewarding, right? I got something out of it. I got, I met a lot of really awesome people. I was a part of a really awesome community and culture and stayed and eventually like that, you learn from that, you grow from that. And, uh, and that stayed with me for a long time in terms of tutoring or helping kids in school or just generally trying to be helpful. It's sort of selfish. Like I feel good like volunteering, so it's like it, that helps, I guess, too. But uh, but that's like if you want a job, the best way to do the job is to do the job and volunteer to continue to do that job until hopefully someone recognizes what it is you're doing, and wants to pay you to do it, right? Like. That's what makes open source software and open source development so great. Because you can identify a problem, you can just start solving it on your own, in your spare time, in your free time, whatever it is that you have available to you. Volunteer that time out, and at least in my experience, I would say with a large percentage of people that have discovered WordPress and turned it into a career or a job, it starts off volunteering. It starts off just trying to solve a specific problem that you know that you can solve at least better than you have identified somebody else can solve it so far, right? And the community side of it is where, uh, on the software end of it with PHPDB or forums or anything else that I personally enjoy, so that's where the support forums of WordPress.org and BuddyPress and BBPress is two pieces of software uh, kind of come from. And that's where WordCamps come from, right? Is the, the community behind the software. And that's something that I think is kind of new, right? Like, you didn't you didn't celebrate Word Perfect, right? <laughs> you didn't go to like a Word Perfect conference and like talk about how awesome the tool was. Like it just wasn't a thing. Uh, so WordPress and sort of we're, we're fortunate to have this experience uh, that I think generations before us didn't have. Uh, we didn't have that feeling of like a, a, a of comfortability with a piece of software, right? Whereas WordPress, you get it installed. You're like, oh, it's running. Well, that's awesome. Well, I, I post it. It's awesome. Like, you kind of just have this, like, initial five, ten minute, like, rewarding cycle where you're like, oh, wait, it's open. And I didn't pay anything for it. I'm going to keep rocking. I can download the themes. I mean, it's, it's the whole initial experience is so good that you, you sort of intrinsically want to continue to help and make it work better. So I think this is new, right, a little bit, where we're, Inventing and experiencing something that I don't know a lot of people haven't had the pleasure of doing this software before. So I talked a little bit about my career, uh, but the the transition from blogging or using WordPress or discovering how it works uh, and turning it into something that makes money is really hard, right? I mean, it, it shouldn't be, but it, I think it is, and. Uh, because everyone kind of struggles, I mean, at least I struggle, but I think everyone struggles with where you fit, right? Like, you kind of can identify, like, your stereotypical developer, designer, blogger, architect, project manager, sales, there are all these different, you know, places that someone can fit. And WordPress, I think, does cater to every single one of those positions. I've seen it at 10 up right automatic where you have sales, you have new project managers, developers that work on only the CSS side of it, or uh, deployment tools, or sysadmin stuff, uh, stuff that has nothing really even to do with WordPress, but supports WordPress, like caching, or uh, grunt, and JavaScript stuff that you didn't, WordPress didn't have before, right? That's kind of slowly transitioning to RESTful APIs. Like, your, your career, in a lot of ways, like, it can be what you want it to be at this point. And you, kind of get to invent where you fit. If there is a thing that you're really good at, that you can look out and go, I don't know that anyone is as good at that as I am, you might be the best person at that thing and not even know. And that's where like the imposter syndrome talk this morning, did you guys see that? Was everyone here mostly for that? That's a big deal, right? Like uh, when, when you don't really know where you fit and you're not really sure how the software should work and whether or not this is a bug or not. Did someone want it to work this way or is it just broken? You kind of have to 
put yourself out there, you have to volunteer an opinion, you have to not be afraid of, of being wrong, and you have to put that imposter syndrome thought totally away. Uh, and not be afraid to screw stuff up. I screw up all the time. I can tell you like lots of really awesome screw up stories uh, of like huge amounts of breakage that maybe weren't directly my fault. Uh, at one point on WordPress.com, uh, you know how you can like mark blogs as spam? Like on multi-site, it gives you a, you know, a bunch of them, you mark one as spam, and now you can't access it anymore? I broke that. I sell it. So all of the, you know, 150,000 or whatever blogs that were like spam blogs that shouldn't be indexed or accessed by anyone were suddenly available to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do with it, right? I mean, it's uh, in, inside the walls of Automatic, uh, there was sort of the, the joke that you, you weren't really an automatician until you broke WordPress.com. <laughs> uh, and there was like, a, back in 2011, I think, uh, WordPress.com had its largest outage in the history of it being WordPress.com. It was about nine hours. This is a big deal, right? I mean, VIP sites, CNN, Fox News, all done. They were all gone. And, uh, it wasn't my fault, <laughs> but uh, when that happens, it doesn't matter if it's 3 a.m. or if you're on a plane or where you are, you jump in to help and try and, and fix that problem, right? And the problem was bad enough that it took, you know, the most brilliant WordPress engineers in the world nine hours to just go back through and fix it because 18 million blogs were destroyed and wiped out, needed to be restored from backup, and the, the solution was literally somebody's computer with like a salt shaker on it, on the enter key to make sure the script would keep running and restoring all of those blogs back. So it's possible, right, that really smart people could make really crappy, totally accidental mistakes. Uh, but you know what happens is people figure it out, you recover, and you move on from that, right? Like it's. When people talk about imposter syndrome, it's really gunshot. You're, you're afraid to hit publish. You're afraid to push code. You are fearful, right, of being judged or having someone look at what it is that you're doing, having it be wrong. You're afraid of tearing it apart and breaking it down. And getting over imposter syndrome, it helps to break stuff. You have to break it. That's how you learn, right? When I was seven years old and doing the dishes and I broke my dad's cereal bowl, you know what it did? Well, Finish doing the dishes. <laughs> That's your your penalty is well, you're not, you don't stop doing the dishes because you broke one. You clean it up and you do more dishes, right? Like that's you get over that. And so imposter syndrome, I think, is prevalent for us because it's new. You're working in a distributed environment. You're sometimes working alone on the couch in the, in the dark. You don't really know where you fit, and you don't know uh, what anyone sort of thinks about what it is that you're doing, what your output is. So you get afraid to. Show it, right? You get afraid to release your art to the world. And the whole idea with WordPress and the community and democratizing publishing is to not worry about that, is to just publish, just ship it and move on. It's about the archive of your content and your year's worth of contributions. It's not about that one little screw up. I mean, I remember very vividly, but it's not about that. You know, it's about uh, recovering from that and moving on. So, uh, and there are much more egregious mistakes that can happen outside of the WordPress community. Where you, you know, like the you had one job meme, right? Where you look at it like, that was the best you could do? <laughs> That's really the best someone could do. And, and sometimes, like I look at like the, uh, uh, so my wife and I, we, we, we like to look at cars and we're car people. So uh, we look at certain automobiles and we think to ourselves, like a team of people designed it, assembled it, and then people bought it, and it's ugly, and it's, <laughs> and it's being recalled, and it's like, stuff's breaking all over it, and they're, they're all, they're rusting out from it, but like, that was the best that like, a bunch of people could do, and people still bought it. So, the imposter syndrome thing, who cares? Just, just your job. Do that, do the best you can in that thing, and move on from that thing. Right? So, uh, when it comes to working on WordPress and the publishing plugins and themes, 
Maybe you're not real great at CSS or JavaScript or PHP or you're learning and you don't really know. You don't want to wreck anybody's sites. You don't want to take anything down. You kind of still get to do that. You get to learn, right? Like the plugin repository, someone's going to make sure that the plugin works well enough. The theme repository, someone's going to review what their standards. There's a little bit of a structure there to help guide you. But you can make those mistakes. And what matters is that you continue making them and then eventually, if what you want is to have someone pay you to do that, they're looking at your archive of mistakes and watching you learn over time. I would interview or hire someone, I can look and say, you know, five years worth of like really crappy stuff, and I can watch you get really good, or at least good enough, right? Where uh, it's, it makes, it's a no-brainer. But if you don't do that, if you don't publish, you don't put something out there, it's impossible to identify that, and you never learn so you always kind of feel very confined and stressed about not releasing that code out. So for me, I was lucky because with open source software, with PHPDB, learning how <coughs> SourceForge, and we remember SourceForge, right? That's where WordPress was originally hosted, was on SourceForge before. It was all sort of brought in house and bespoke plugins and theme repository were built. But uh, you know, GitHub today, obviously, you can just put it there. Just put everything there. It doesn't matter. It's a, what matters is your archive of blog posts and your archive of, uh, of code or your experience. That's what WordPress enables, right? That's why we're, that's why we're here. Uh, and, and then talking about imposter syndrome, right? Like, it's, health is a big deal. Uh, mental health, physical health. Uh, like working it automatically, you used to get like a, uh, you could have a gym membership and they pay a little bit towards it. Uh, ergonomics and having a nice desk that you can work at and a healthy, a healthy sort of environment and workspace. But when you work alone, for the most part, uh, no one knows that you're going crazy. <laughs> right? You're just going crazy and pulling it off as much as you can uh, and hoping that no one figures out that you're like slowly going crazy. <laughs> And even working at Automatic, right? When I was there, I started at about 80 people. I left when I was 130 or so. Uh, with people that like you see on a regular basis a few months apart, uh, that actively are hoping that you stay healthy so that you can continue to do your job, uh, but also genuinely care about you as like a friend and a coworker. Uh, it's very easy, right? When you are alone trying to solve a problem, uh, or feel alone, or mostly alone, or in, a, in an office by yourself. Sure, you can call and reach out and text, whatever it is, right? You're not truly alone, but it's very easy to feel that way. Uh, because you're not in an office. You're not 9 to 5, going in, getting coffee, going to lunch. You're not really doing those things the way that, uh, that, we're, that we're used to. Or that you, I would say, that we, when we were kids, maybe, expected that we would be, right? Like, I, at least when I was young, you applied for a job. You didn't have to make a job. You kind of just applied, or you knew someone, and you acquired a job. Thank you for the job. And then you went and did a job. And it's not really like that, right? Like, you become an adult, you're like, well, i got to prove I know what I'm doing, right? Like, i gotta, I have to convince someone that they need to pay me every two weeks for the yeah, next year or so. Uh, and if you don't pay attention to your personal health, right, that people pick up on that, and uh, hopefully. And uh, it's very easy to fall into like a, a negative cycle of things if you don't have a support structure or a reward structure there to keep you positive and keep it exciting and keep it fresh and new and fun. And uh, I think they touched on it a little bit. I know I've talked with Jeff Chandler on the tavern uh, a little bit about stuff like this, but uh, he perks up. Are you awake? No? Oh, yeah, I'm really touch. Oh, good, thank you. <laughs> uh, but you know, the, something like depression is a big deal, right? Like, the majority of people suffer with some variety of it, one way or another. Uh, sometimes you can't identify it. Sometimes other genuinely happy, very jovial people still depressed, right? Like it's one of those things that's very difficult. And I think that when you're uh, you know, tr trudging through sort of uh, uh, new territory with being a remote distributed employee, uh, you, you're used to working in an office environment, but now you're working by yourself, uh, everything else can be going perfectly fine in your life. Uh, but you're not getting that sort of social stimulation that you're used to getting from 
being a kid, Christmas morning suddenly is less exciting because you're an adult and you have to pay bills, right? Like, there are things that are just life things that happen that you shouldn't really be depressed about, but uh, you, know, you do a job a certain length of time for a few years and it becomes a little bit less attractive, right? You get bored with it or whatever it is. Uh, and one of the things I talked uh, with Chris about was uh, uh, like with, uh, with contributing, and with WordPress and with uh, working remote, uh, it's very easy to not even know that you aren't really taking care of yourself the way that you should. And you sort of become this reward cycle of productivity and getting stuff done and completing tasks becomes the reward where you forget to like play a video game, right? You forget to fly a drone or go for a run or like do anything because it's not product, it's not productive time. Like, it's, it's important to like let go of WordPress and do anything else. Uh, even though WordPress can be super rewarding, and you can sit and do it all day and tweak the site and make new sites for other people and get paid more, and it's like, you're, you're jamming, right? But you still have to put it aside and do something for yourself that has nothing to do uh, with WordPress. And it's hard. It was hard when I worked at Automatic, it was hard when I worked at 10 Up, and it's hard today for me to think of something else that uh, isn't one. Like, WordPress is my hammer and everything's a nail. I'll just solve that problem with WordPress and it's fine. But, uh, but taking time to do something else is, uh, is still like a daily sort of challenge. So my advice, I think, for like a crowd full of bloggers, developers, people that are sort of getting into it uh, and using it and learning how it works is that it's a lot of fun, it's super rewarding, you will have an amazing time, but do not forget about yourself. Right? Do not forget to take that time for not WordPress stuff, uh, because that's important too. That you need to you need to be able to uh, to be healthy, and uh, and that's an important and I think relatively critical part of defining success. Uh, so I like wrote a blog post. I had this like half baked idea about something, and, uh, like where I used to buy a domain. Like I had this idea of like, oh, I'm gonna buy this domain. It's so sweet. I'm gonna build this site. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> And then I have like a hundred of these like things, and I'm like, I don't, what am I, why am I here? Nobody cares about these because nobody's bought it. This is dumb. So I have, I have basically as many draft blog posts as I have like domains, where I was like, I have, I have a problem. <laughs> I have, I'm, I'm hoarding domains and like unwritten draft blog posts, and I just have too much happening. So I had a post about uh, what like defining success meant. And I think that that, uh, is, is a challenge uh, because there's so much to do and particularly with WordPress where you can find anything that is sort of in a perpetual state of like unfinishedness where you could go, oh, well the icons are in a font but we want to move to SVGs and I can help with that so I can stay up for 12 hours straight and eat frozen pizza and that's what I'll do and that's the day, that is, that is success but then you don't get there so now that turns into tomorrow and now you've got some stuff going on like defining success is very, very difficult when you're contributing to WordPress because there is an infinite number of things that you and a million other people are completing <coughs> in, in that day. And there are some helpful tools like Track and uh, the make.wordpress.org site and lots of documentation to sort of help guide you. But what no one tell, told me anyways is that you really do have to decide for yourself what that output looks like and when success is sort of done for the day. Like, I've done enough today. I can, I can do something else. Because there, is, there are so many things that you could contribute to, that you could help out with, that you could offer insight towards, that it's really super important uh, to define success for yourself in that day, in that moment, or in your career. It doesn't matter if you don't, if you're not, you, you might not be successful. Hopefully you are. You might not ever be. But it's important that you at least can identify what the end of that looks like so that you can move on. And that's where like WordPress's release cycles being every three months or so is defining success. Every three months, hooray! Right? Like you, you get to say that there is a time where you get to celebrate and then move on, right? Same with BuddyPress. We try and do every three months, it's usually three months in a week. But it's important to have that milestone. And it's not just for shipping code, is it, as much as I think that throughout the day, if you learn something, if you write a blog post, if you 
podcast, if it's whatever it is, whatever it is that you're into, to clearly define what that day looks like for yourself. Um, because I know that when I sort of started and was kind of ramping up and figuring out how this worked, that I didn't do that. I had no idea what success really meant other than like, I don't know, responding to people in the forums, writing some code and themes and shipping stuff. And, was my, um, like my goal eventually work at Automatic or have my own agency or whatever, right? Uh, but I know your definition of success may fluctuate and change, but it's important to do it. Uh, hey, that, that's all that I have. But <laughs> obviously I could go on forever. So uh, if you'd like to be friends with me, whew, that is the way to do it. And then, uh, if there are questions about any of this, uh, I think we've got 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, 10 minutes for questions. So hopefully they're awesome. And if not, I can fill in 10 minutes. Or so. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Um, how come WordPress doesn't have, maybe it does, but I can find, how come it only has forms and doesn't really have like a help menu? Does it? That's a good question. Uh, the question, I'll, 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 the question is why. This is a good question. I like this question a lot. Uh, <laughs> the question is why does WordPress.org right uh, have primarily focused on the forums and less on like help, knowledge base you know, tips and those kinds of things. Uh, so I'm going to answer this question in two different ways. One of them doesn't help you at all. <laughs> One of them won't. Okay. So the, the first reason, which I enjoy this a lot, is that when WordPress.org became a website, uh, it needed support forums. And uh, rather than make forums back then, uh, Matt just used MyBB. It was open source, GPL, the same license as WordPress. And, uh, and used MyBB as the forum software for WordPress.org. And you can go back through the like Internet Archive and see the really old original first versions of WordPress.org. It's really ugly, but it's super sort of about what you would have expected back in 2003 or four. It was exactly what you would have imagined. And that was it. WordPress.org didn't even run WordPress. It ran MyBB. It was support forums only for a piece of software. That's what you did back then. I have software, people are going to want to ask questions about it, go ask questions at the website. That was kind of the approach. Eventually, uh, MyBB turned into BB Press, uh, using the same database schema, and then that shifted around and changed a little bit. Uh, and then some parts of WordPress started being powered by WordPress, like the blog itself, uh, we're talking about release schedules and things. And then the codex, if you go to codex.wordpress.org, is actually a wiki. So it's not running WordPress, it's just it was easy. People can log in and edit it and submit edits, and it was exactly what the knowledge base of WordPress needed to be. But that came later, right? That wasn't the heart of WordPress.org, it was the afterthought. So that's why it's that way. That doesn't really help you. Uh, the answer is that there's a lot of effort going into making it what you want it to be. Uh, but it's taking a lot of time. So right now, if you go to make.wordpress.org, is where the sort of community of prolific contributors are talking about teaming up and where their teams are and accessibility and translations and this and that for how WordPress itself is made. Uh, but that doesn't help you with the sort of tidbits of customizing it, tricking it out, yeah, figuring it out. It's also, in some situations, opinion. Sure. You know, if I've tried it, it's not always solid. Right. If I could email you and get the answer, I think I would probably get the right answer. Well, and that's uh, the, the way that we're trying to address that uh, basically comes down to reputation, right? So a lot of the times when you find a plugin on WordPress.org, you look for someone who you trust. Right, to have reviewed it, or rated it, or to have built it, or contributed to it. And so, for the users in the community, uh, you can go to profiles.wordpress.org slash whoever the person is, 
and you'll get their WordPress.org profile. And that helps you identify forum topics, contributions, everything pretty much all across WordPress.org. And more and more things are getting funneled into everybody's profiles every day. Uh, like WordCamp, attendees, speaking, whatever, right? Like anything that happens throughout WordPress uh, is getting funneled sort of into everyone's individual profiles. So the steps we're taking towards helping identify, uh, basically separating the wheat and the chaff, right? The forest from the trees. How do you figure out like what really is the solution for the problem you have? Eventually, profiles that WordPress developer will help you with that on an individual person by person basis. And all of the avatars that you see across WordPress.org, and you'll click on that, and it'll always take you to their profile. As right now, there's kind of a mishmash of stuff happening. So, uh, what you're asking is, uh, there there are active changes going towards improving that experience uh, that have taken a little bit of time to transition into. Uh, so it's like a known issue, but actively being uh, improved, almost daily. Yeah, just one other question. Sure. There's no help phone number either. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, so that is funny. Because you're not wrong. Like the, the, when you, if you're not deeply ingrained into the culture, mm -hmm. you expect for there to be like a, if you really want me to use it, you gotta help me, right? Like you, yeah, you expect for there to be that easily sort of that, that easy amount of accessibility, uh, and and it is more complicated than that. Uh, I don't know how you solve that problem exactly. So there are like what agencies and people, right? That you can hire and pay and contract out to help you, and their time is valuable, and you have a problem, and they can solve it. But identifying who to make those best relationships with best and it's tough. It's, it's well, hard. I don't think Microsoft has a helpline for actual problems with an application. Right. Either, but um, just, just a, it was just a thought, and uh, I'm glad you're working on. You're basically working on your yep. site. Yep. And the other, one of the other things is like, uh, like WordPress doesn't really have a market either, right? It's not like it's, there's no WordPress Super Bowl commercial. <laughs> there's, a square, there's a Squarespace commercial, and maybe Automatic will have a WordPress.com commercial someday, right? But there isn't a WordPress commercial out there, so you, there is no marketing. Well, right? how do they make your money? Well, that's, we can talk about that later, right? <laughs> well, I was going to say one point that I would make about .org is that .org itself doesn't make money. Well, that's just it. So, okay, that's a good point. So, doesn't. so WordPress.org, right, is it, WordPress is a piece of software. It's open source and free. Right. You don't pay for WordPress, yeah. right? So WordPress.org has no helpline or there's no because there's no employee, right? It's a bunch of me. It's a bunch of you. It's a bunch of people going, hey, I can see the code. I can see it's broken. I can fix it. Now it's better, hopefully. Or you broke it, but hopefully it's better. <laughs> uh, where for a, a user coming in, kind of figuring out how to. It's, uh, it is, uh, oh, what's the easiest way to say it? It is sort of do-it-yourself, built by a bunch of do-it-yourselfers, so you kind of do have to go that extra step to go, well, I wish I could just have, but I can't, so one more step in, let's figure out and try and learn and kind of fix. So it does require a little bit more commitment than that, but it's, I agree. I agree that what you're saying is tough. Did you have something to? I was going to follow up. One thing to note about Microsoft is they're actually migrating all of their TechNet and their Microsoft oh, software sure. network systems, their support systems, to WordPress. It's happening right now. And Microsoft's open sourcing a bunch of stuff, right? They open source yeah. .NET stuff, Visual Basic. They're they're putting all that out there, right? So, the, ironically. Going that direction. Was there I have time for one more question? I think. Yeah. Okay. I was the last one yesterday too. That's a great hey. um, I'm really, really new to WordPress, and so I don't know a whole lot about it. But when you're talking about contributing, are you only meant like talking about like coding oh, no. like that, oh. or as a writer can I do that? Sure. Okay. I mean, you, the yes. 
there are different ways you can do it as a writer uh, that maybe don't directly touch code, but that could, right? So one example that would selfishly help me, right, uh, is uh, in BuddyPress or BDPress or even in WordPress, right? Like WordPress is howdy and you know cheating. There are like little strings in it that are very jovial and happy and fun, but there are phrases, right, and the intro screens, you know, all those things. You could improve all that writing, the paragraphs, all the things in WordPress itself. Like you have the opportunity to see what those little paragraphs are going to be and write that paragraph for 80 million people, right? So as a writer, you could actually influence the voice of WordPress, right, if you really want to. Okay. Uh, but personally, if it's on the blogging or the news side of it, or there are lots of different ways that you could. Uh, you could start off like submitting posts to WP Tavern, WP Beginner, uh, any WordPress sort of specific community-based blog as like a guest writer. Uh, if you had a BuddyPress or a BBPress installation that was neat, you could write a guest post on BuddyPress or BBPress.org and talk about the cool thing you built. Uh, there are lots of different ways that you could write and talk about what you're doing that aren't necessarily directly involved with WordPress, but are you contributing and getting involved? There's also Siobhan, uh, who's writing the like WordPress handbook, like the history of WordPress. Yeah. Right? No, I think the first chapter or something. Oh, first yeah, chapter. Yeah, yeah. 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 Next month. Oh, thank you. I don't know. Okay, good. So next month? Is that the yeah? Okay. Uh, so do some editorial, right? Check grammar, spelling, whatever. Like there are ways that you can on the writing side of it help. Yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, so that's I don't know, probably maybe not a great answer, but does that help? Sorry? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I think I have no more time. Sorry, Dilbert. I guess if you want to, you can just shout, and I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> Anybody interested in working on the docs project? Can see you. Oh, there you go. Talk to Dilbert about documentation. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like, what does this function? <laughs> it could just be technical writing, documentation, anything to try and translate something out into better English. Probably helpful. Yep. Um, so thank you very much.